We are live. JT here. Welcome to the huddle. The huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I just want to welcome you, whether you are watching live with us as we stream into the Facebook community, whether you are watching the replay on YouTube, whether you are listening to the audio on the podcast. Thank you so much for choosing to be here with me and my special guest today. And here's what I want you to do is go all in. You will take from here valuable nuggets of wisdom that will allow you to not only succeed in football, but succeed in the game of life. I've really been looking forward to chatting with my guest today. I met him a few years ago, back when I was coaching high school football. And from the moment we met, always just loved his, his energy, his enthusiasm, just always loved just having a conversation. And very often our conversations, yeah, started as football, but really just about life and, you know, really getting to know another human being. My guest in the huddle today is the recruiting coordinator and the offensive line coach at Carleton University. My guest in the huddle today is Coach Chris Hopkins. How are you today, Coach? Awesome. I'm not. I'm nervous. To be honest, JT, you've had some good name, big names on here, so I don't know. Like, I got, I got some big shoes to fill, but I'm really excited. I, I love what you do, and you know, I, I love. I, you know, it's easy to pick up some of the things and some of those nuggets that you talk about, and I'm excited mm -hmm. to try to share something with with the people out there. Yeah, no, you know, coach, and and like I said, it's uh, I've I've really been looking forward to this conversation. We've had great ones, and I'm just really enthused that people kind of get to see behind the curtains and get to really hear like what high performers, you know, how they think and, you know, the actions they take. So again, um, grateful that you were able to join us today. Hey, happy to be here. Okay. So coach, I just want to take a moment just to send you some gratitude. Again, I know that you're in the midst of getting prepped for a football season again with you, with you sport season back on. So thank you for carving out some time to uh, join us today. Yeah, I'm pumped. I mean, it's nice to be doing football again, JT. I mean, we were talking about that. Like, it's so nice to be back. But, uh, yeah, I always got time for you for sure. Thanks a lot. Okay. So, Coach, one of the first things that I always like to do in the huddle is to remind people that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. So, I'm curious, what is an interesting fact? Some may say maybe a quirk that – maybe a lot of people don't know about you that you would feel comfortable sharing with our community. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's funny because I, I kind of knew something like this was coming JT. So <laughs> I don't know if I should share it. Like there's like an intimate amount of a circle that, uh, that probably know this, uh, but I do have like a little bit of a stage background. Like I've done musicals, plays, uh, okay. like you name it uh, in my past, like, a lot of them too, like more than just a few. Mm -hmm. And uh, I benefit, you know, I, there's a good mentor of mine in high school named Suzanne Doyle York said that, you know, basically said like, you have to do musical. And I was like, what? And I'm a football player. Like I don't do musicals. And then I did it and I was hooked. And it's funny. Cause like, I loved it. Like I wasn't, you know, I was a, basically a chorus member, most of the shows, but like you got that same vibe, the same like energy and enthusiasm and excitement you get after like winning a game, you know, you get it from a standing ovation. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's that same feeling. So that's probably the biggest thing. I don't need okay. to go too deep into some of the roles that I've played, but uh, you know, I really, I, I really cherish those experiences. I'll probably do it again at some point in my life. Um, you know, the other thing is like, you know, the getting to know a different group of people you know, that not, aren't necessarily, you know, the athletes, which was uh, something that I really cherished as well. But that's probably like the thing that most people don't know about me, I guess. Back home, they know about it, but yeah, not as much, uh, not as much up here. 
Well, it's interesting, Coach, and I appreciate you sharing. And what it reminds me is, again, what all great leaders are. They're open-minded, right? They're open to new ideas, new experiences, new people. And when you're open, right, that's where the joy of life really happens. Yeah, and a lot of growth, you know, and I think that's one thing is that there's there's a lot of times that, you know, football's natural for me, I think, you know, I maybe I have to work at it. Like I'm not as smart as some other coaches out there and stuff like that, but like, you know, um, you know, doing the shows and being on stage is, is a whole different feeling and, you know, challenging yourself to kind of be in a positive mindset and to, to not get embarrassed and working through some of that stuff and like working through the challenges of like learning a role and, you know, learning lines and, this is, they're all the same challenges of life, you know, and uh, that's the thing is that um, I feel like there was some experiences that I did on stage that made me a better football coach, you know, in terms of growth and maturity and realizing what I'm capable of doing. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, like I said, like, I really cherish that opportunity. I, I loved it. And I hope I'll go back at some point in my life. Okay. Well, you know what, next time you're on coach, you let me know. I'm, I, you know, me, I'm, I'm all about for expanding my horizon. So you let me know. I'll, I'll be front and center coach. All right. All right. You got the first ticket. <laughs> okay. So, you know, you, you've had a very successful career first as an athlete and, and then as a coach, what you're doing now, I, I'm curious, what has been, been the biggest takeaway from you like what role has sport played for you in your life and you know what is that lesson that still you carry to this day Mm -hmm. uh I think the biggest thing is is, you know it's funny because I think about myself as a player and like I don't think that my playing days and my coaching days are really rep they don't they don't match up they're not let's say who I was as a player was not who I was as a coach I think during my playing days, like, I think the biggest thing is learning, like, perseverance, trying to push through, you know, some negative mindset. And, you know, like, we were not a strong program, you know, like, we, we had a tough goal. Um, but, you know, I'm really proud of sticking it out and battling it out for five years. And I feel like, you know, with all the work that you do in football, it's really 12 months a year. You know, I think that I left university I left school I left my playing career with a little bit more maturity than I than I started you know in terms of like I understood what adversity looked like I understood you know um how important it was kind of to get back up on the horse and to keep fighting uh and I think that the the, the thing like with coaching is that like the thing that I always carry with me is is like the people that I've met And like how important, you know, I think that I'm a product of like a lot of the good people that I've gotten the opportunity to work with, you know? And I think that, I mean, it sounds cliche, those relationships matter, but like, those are people that still are near and dear to me. And like, it's one of those things where you don't necessarily see those people for a couple of years and then you come back and you're immediately connected and that connection drives you, you know, that connection drives you to be better. You know, it's funny because I talked to like my old high school coach like a couple days ago and, you know, I told him exactly what we were talking about. Like COVID, you're kind of like back and forth and, you know, like it's tough not to like through all this stuff when you're not doing something that you're passionate about and, you know, you're not, you know, you're missing the football and some of those things are, are not, you're not afforded those same opportunities. You know, you forget what your purpose is sometimes and then, you know, you're reminded by those people and those connections. So I think those things that those connections drive me a little bit, those relationships that I've made through coaching, because those people are really important to me and they've invested a lot of time in me and likewise on the other hand. So, you know, I think those are the two things that kind of step, step out to me, like stand out Mm -hmm. to me is just in terms of overcoming some adversity through university and pushing through some of the obstacles as a university athlete. And then, you know, building those connections and letting those connections drive you and those experiences drive you. And I appreciate you sharing, Coach. And, and what I really heard from you as you were sharing were two things. I, I love how you talked about it was developing that discipline of mind to mm-hmm. focus on winning the next play. And I, you know, before we hopped on, we were talking about you know that idea of being process driven, right? Goal oriented, but process driven. 
And that's where I believe, you know, football is one of that special games because it is almost sort of that, as Coach Snyder talked about, that reset mentality, right? But it really is, can you, it's about, it really does, football really does provide an amazing tool to teach people, okay, no, it's just about let me win the next play, right? Let me go all in, right? And, and just focus on doing, you know, my job, whatever the cliche is, and win the next play. So I, so I love how you talked about, like, that was a lesson that, you got, you know, during your playing days. But then I love again, how you also shared the growth that you've had as a coach, how you really learned that it's about, you know, pouring into other people. It's about really investing into developing relationships. And that's something I've observed from you coach, you know, not only, and personally, as we've developed the friendship, but even from a professional standpoint, when we first met coach to coach. So I'm curious, was there a moment where, you know, you really started to understand, hey, you know what, it's really about people first? Or is that something that you've just kind of naturally always, you know, understood? Yeah. Uh, I've always been a people person, very social, I think. You know what I mean? I think that I can, I can talk to most people and uh, build rapport with most people. I think that, like, it, it probably really worked and I think it comes down to like who my mentors were a little bit at Mount Allison and two of them are you know currently coaching in U Sport and Gaetan Richard and and Scott Brady and then what Kelly Jeffrey created is that you know is instilling that belief and inspiring that belief into another individual you know we were the smallest program in the country you know and like it was about the unity in our room. It was about the connection we had with each other. It was about the times that we sat in the lounge at nine o'clock during study hall, hall and hung out with the guys. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. all that time that we put into the guys that immediately connected us, that drove us. And I think that like, I started to see that and you could, it, you just gravitate to it. As soon as Kelly and Gates and Brady started kind of creating that, like I wanted to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean I wanted to be a part of it and you learn a little bit as you go like how to build a strong relationship but also hold people accountable which is a delicate balance a little bit but that's where I think that I really started to understand it and I think that you started to get it's just like anything you learn it but you got to repeat it and you got to keep practicing it and I think that throughout my career I think that I've continually gotten gotten better at you mean being better at establishing the relationship and, and getting more out of the athletes because, you know, you learn as you go. It's, it's <laughs> as you experience it, you learn it and how important it is to, you know, break down some of the person that you're connecting with barriers, but also your own to make sure that you can, can connect. And hopefully the next step would stop is greatness, you know, in terms of exceeding expectations. I love that you're sharing it. And, and what sort of jumped out as you were painting this picture of your, your time as, at a, as an athlete at Mount A was just it, that building that sense of team, of brotherhood, right? Of really community, family, whatever you want to, it was integral because again, you were a smaller school, you might not have had the resources and, and the amount of, um, you know, athletes as some of the quote unquote big schools, but because you were able to really build that team, that connection, that brotherhood, that sense of family, it allowed you to, to maximize, right? What you were able to produce on the field, right? 100%. And that's such, and that's such a valuable lesson for life. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think that there was a lot of self-awareness in our group too, you know, and I think that, that carries to, you know, my experience with football in the Brunswick, like, you know, I think that it, it it's a it's overused a little bit sometimes in coaching, like the opportunity where like you got to love each other and commit to each other. You know, but like I really think that we demonstrated that at Mount Allison, and it's funny because I think that like I'm starting to really get that feeling here at Carleton. You know, and I think that it it takes time. Culture takes time. You know, it does. It takes time to develop. Relationships take time to develop. But like, it's that thing that we know who we are. We know what we're capable of, but we're going to give you hell anyway, because we care about each other and we're invested in this thing more than you are or more than our opponent is. And it's, 
it was awesome to see the success and see like, cause like, especially with the Mount Allison experience and then the football in the Brunswick experience, like we were carrying everybody with us, you know, as much as like, you know, I was just this really small piece of the Mount Allison piece and a little bit bigger than football in the Brunswick. You're carrying all that alumni with you. You're carrying all those families with you and everyone possesses that same attitude. And, you know, I think positive attitudes, you know, that are self-aware, you know, not ego driven, you know, more, more driven by love and, and connection. Um, you know, I think that you can reach greatness. I really yeah. do. I, and, you know, and I think that it's what your definition of greatness is. And, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the thing is that um, we, you know, we, we wanted to win a Vanier cup at, at Mount Allison and it got closer and closer and closer to that realization that we you know we're one game away mm-hmm. you know a couple of times and that was really what gates kelly and, and, and scott created so mm-hmm. um and it's the same thing with football in the brunswick is one of those things we're like listen we have the smallest membership in the country mm-hmm. like when we lo- go up against quebec alberta you know um ontario in the first round like we have to be process driven Mm-hmm. we have to play for the next play because if we sit there and look at the we the only thing if we evaluate ourselves by just by the scoreboard like we're losers mm-hmm. that's the only thing we're going to define ourselves as but if you sit there and you say okay all of a sudden you know we're in a position where you know we ran on ontario more than any other program in the canada cup you know like we're sitting there with team quebec where you know we have three takeaways at team Quebec you know and like we're in a position where they have you know four d1 players on their roster and we really played with them you know we Mm -hmm. may have out physical them and you carry that success into the next experience and I think that's why you know when we focus on the process obviously goal it did but like we can carry that into our next challenge Mm -hmm. and that's one thing I think that we've you know history has shown that we've done pretty well out, out east for sure and I think that you're going to see a Carlton program that is kind of a product of the same thing. Is that a product of the last, you know, few years of the experiences and um, I'm excited to see where it plays out. Yeah, I am too. I'm (laughs) I'm enthused. Yeah. So coach, one thing that you really um, drew on there was your experience with football in New Brunswick. And you've been in some prominent leadership roles, right? You were the director of the high performance right stream. You've also been a head coach and a coordinator of the U18 program. So I'm curious, you know, it, it's coming from a coaching background in high school. It's, it's interesting because sometimes, you know, some programs have more resources, some don't, right? Some are in more affluent areas, some aren't. And, and that's just the reality, right? But I'm curious from your experience, what was the biggest lesson that you learned in terms of building culture coming from a province that, again, had the smallest membership, did not maybe have, you know, the same number of financial resources, athlete resources, like, what was it like building sort of like a program, you know, from the ground up and building it from the grassroots? Yeah, I think there's a couple of things. I think the first thing is that hard work works. You know, I think that, you know, if you're afraid of hard work, uh, it's not, it's not going to work, you know, especially for a smaller program. Uh, one thing that like, there's two things that, I, especially with the New Brunswick example that we tried to create. Um, one is that we want, wanted to create like a growth mindset and it comes back to the process driven philosophy kind of what we talked about is that we need to grow every time that we're on the field. We need to grow every time that we're together, you know, and making sure that, you know, we're not just getting better as football players, but getting better as a program, you know, getting better as people and being able to, we can just bring that much more to the table. So, you know, we didn't, I realized how quickly like negative mindsets can take over, you know, and it's like those negative thoughts. And that's the thing is like your thoughts become your behaviors and then they become your actions. And all of a sudden that's so infectious. It spreads worse than, it spreads way faster than positive a positive mentality because like pos- being positive and staying in a growth mindset, you got to work at it. You got to work at it. You got to keep like, it's like that, like you said, every rep. So like we were very cognizant of trying to create that growth mindset of like, how do you get better? 
and how do we measure getting better? Uh, and, you know, we made sure that we had to celebrate our successes, you know, like just in terms of guys getting to the national program and people realizing in New Brunswick that, hey, we can do this, you know, getting our wins, starting to win as a program at the national level, you know, whether it be even in the last game in the seven, eighth place game, like all of a sudden we're that much closer and, and it works. You know what I mean? And that's the thing that they need to realize. And we wanted to create a positive experience. That's one thing. And I, it's funny. We got a chance that we got a chance to go home this summer. Um, and we got a, you know, it was literally like homecoming for football in New Brunswick. It's Nova, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick to play, play against each other. And, you know, to sit there and, you know, the, even during COVID times, probably breaking some protocol, but like hugging guys that we have, I haven't seen in four or five years, you know, and having that connection is, is special. Like, it just like, it fills you up. Um, and then, sorry, the last thing was creating toughness, creating mm -hmm. mental and physical toughness. So like, this is one thing I'm really proud of. Like we define toughness in our program. So like toughness, and I've kind of brought that to our Carlton group too. And it's funny because Steve and I have had a lot of great chats about culture here. So we can kind of talk about that in a bit, but like, our definition of culture in New Brunswick was, is that our ability to overcome physical, mental, psychological barriers out of love for our teammates. Mm -hmm. And like, we, like I hammered it. Like it was literally like I made our guys like quoted. And it was like, we, uh, they understood that they were going to face adversity. They understood that they were going to face better athletes. They understood that they were going to face bigger athletes, but you know, how tough are you? And it was one of the things like, how can you measure yourself about how tough you are? And it was that, you know, like, I love my teammates. So I'm going to work my butt off to make sure that I do everything in my power, you know, to be successful, you know, and to provide success for my teammates. So I thought that that's one thing that I was really proud of at the end is that like, I thought that we did a great job creating that growth mindset in our program. You know, I think that we did a great job creating a positive experience for our athletes. And I think that a lot of those athletes have, have success and have had success and bloomed a little bit at the, at the U sport level. And then, you know, for the first time, like we've moved one of our provincial players into the CFL this year. So like they've taken that mindset and carried it with them. And obviously they've had other people inspire them along the way, but just being a little piece of it and being part of our program and having our program be a little piece of it is special. Mm. And, I, and I love the simplicity of your message, right? And, and I, I do my best to live by the keep it simple, simple philosophy. And I love how you talk about barriers because one of these ideas I came up with and this question has been kind of in my head all week is, what if you chose to perceive your barriers as a blessing? Right. And again, it's, it's that it's that flexing that perception muscle. Right. Because it like you said, it's so easy to look at something because our mind is so trained to pick out what's not going well, the quote unquote negative. Right. And it's not just saying that it's a negative thought is four to seven times stronger than a positive. Right. Plus, once you speak that out into existence, it amplifies it 10 times. So when you have a negative, which again, most people, again, we've been trained to find out what's not right. Then you start talking about it 40 to 70 times more likely to happen. Math wasn't my favorite subject growing <laughs> up, but if it's 40 to 70 times more likely to happen, I don't know about you, coach. I know you feel the same way. It's, it's, why would I subject myself to that? Right. And, but again, with this now, with that awareness, I, you know, it's about now you can make a different choice, right. And choose to, like you said, focus on the positive. Yeah. And it, you know, it's funny, we're dealing with that with our young offensive linemen here at Carlton is that, and it's like trying to explain to them that like, it's a roller coaster. <laughs> your first years are like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you walk off the field in your first university practice, you're like, I may be the worst football player ever. Like, you know what I mean? And it's tongue in cheek, but like you may like, and like, I, it's something that I work on every day too. You know, I think that it's funny how you say, imagine we perceive our, our barriers, you know, as positives. And it's funny. Cause like, I am very much a people pleaser. Like I'm the guy who says yes to everything and probably overshoots sometimes, you know, and, and I, I, 
feel bad when I deliver, don't deliver as well as I, I'd like to. I'm probably way more of a critic on, on myself, you know? And so uh, the same thing that my first hero alignment go through, like I'm going through too. And I think that it's one of those things that you've got to continually work at, continually grind yourself out. Is that like, there's a saying that I always say, and it, you know, I take it from some of my men- like mentors, like it's never as bad as you perceive and it's never as good. Yeah. You know, it's, Mm -hmm. and I think that that's one of the things is that there's a lot of overthinking. And like you said, if you start putting those stats on like negative thoughts, I completely believe it because like the negative just grows so fast. And like the positive, you're like, yeah, it's like a check mark. Yeah. Feel good about it. And you almost move on. And you got to remember that, you know, you got to remember that you can grow from those positive experiences too, you know, and that positive, those positive thoughts, you know, and then taking the negative thoughts and being able to, make that your fuel for growth as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i love that you shared that how about how your mentors talked about like really it's it's really what i heard from you was learning to be objective right is is and and that's where i think it's so important that you know as athletes we thrive in the doing right that that ambition and drive like we'll go do the work but the other side of the coin is that we can sometimes be our own harshest critics, right? Because that ambition, that drive. So it's really learning, like you said, to, to really harness that ambition and drive and, and really train ourselves to be more objective with ourselves, to just view things as is without having like, it's a positive, it's a negative. It just, it just is. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's a good way to put it. And it, it may not resonate with a 19 year old kid, Yeah, you know, the yeah. first time you say it, but as a coach, I'm going to drill that into you. You're going to hear yeah. it from me for five years. So at least by the end of the five years, you know, like when you get into a tough situation with your family or you get a tough situation with your job or, you know, uh, if you're blessed and you get to play this game a little bit longer, hopefully you can carry some of those lessons yeah. along because at some point you're going to be back in that mindset. It's funny how life has a way of like kind of repeating itself a little bit. So like, you're going to be in that same spot before. So you have to learn how to handle it. And like you said, like, it's just a positive. It's just a negative. How do I go forward? And it's, yeah. it, it's that, you know, it's that classic, like E plus R equals O. Yeah. And like, like, what's your response. Right. And that's going to create your outcomes that you, that you deserve and that you, you know, that you work for. No. And, and, and I love it. I, and I love that you're so focused on, 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 on helping teach and make the athletes more aware of, of these things. So I'm curious from you, you deal with a lot of, you know, ambitious driven coachable young men, right? Again, future. And this is where I'm a firm believer that high level athletes make great leaders in the future, because again, they're ambitious, they're driven, they're coachable. They know how to get up and get after it. So I'm curious, like in your time coaching, have you noticed a shift in the athletes in terms of like, when they come to you at a high school, are most, do they have the mental, physical, social, emotional toughness to really thrive at the post-secondary level? Or is this something that, you know, like, would you say the majority are coming in prepared? You know, the majority aren't, what's been your experience? Uh, Unfortunately for the most part, like it's a pretty big shift once you get here you know, with everything, like, think about like, you know, I moved an hour and a half down the road and I thought it was like the biggest move of my life when I got to university. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my dad dropped me off. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, but uh, it's tough. And I think that, you know, your 18 years or 19 years, you know, for the most part living with your mom or with your dad or both, you know, and it's, it's a tough transition. Um you know, obviously there's different circumstances and different individuals that have been through some different, different experiences that have been more prepared for it. But for the most part, no, you know, like it's, and that's where my role as a coach comes in. Like, I want to have a strong enough relationship with my guys that like, if I chew you out, like I can pull you aside after, pull my arm around you and like coach you up. And it's the same thing. Like you have to coach them in more than just football here. You know, like you've got a kid that's 18 years old and then now COVID has made it even worse because like a lot of these kids spent an extra year where they didn't really leave the house, you know, and like 
they're away from home. They're learning a whole new system. They used to be the boss where they were before. You know what I mean? They're on their own in terms of like, they got to figure out residence. They got to figure out where they're going for classes. And like they got to figure out, are they taking the right classes? Like, it's our job to guide them. It's, it's our job to kind of mentor them through. And then at some point, they're going to, it's going to click. It's going to click How to this is how I'm successful. And it's, it's through some of the, you know, the trials and the, and the challenges that, you, that those guys grow. And all of a sudden you see them in, you know, second, third, fourth year starting to get that growth. And it's, ah, it's inspiring. Like, you know what I mean? That's why you do it. Like to see a kid that struggled in school, you know, be in a position where two years later, He's an academic all Canadian because he's learned those challenges and he's got overcome those challenges. Uh, and then the same thing, you know, in football He's like, you know, see a kid, like they kids don't have that perspective. Like young athletes don't have that perspective about like, well, where was I a year ago? You know what I mean? And I think that's, that's sometimes forgotten. And I think that the biggest thing is that I'm trying to in, inspire in our athletes is that, you're more resilient than you think. You know what I mean? Your skin's tougher than you think. And I think that, you know, I'll be here to help you and to guide you. You know what I mean? But there's going to be a point where you don't necessarily need me as much, but mm. I'll be there every step of the way. And even after the fact, if you need me, and that's my job. And, and I love how intentional you are with your words, coach. I, I love how you talk about, you know, that's what, a great leader is right and and i'm a firm believer that you know when we're talking coaching whether we're talking at, it's really management it's the development of people and a great coach or mentor is someone that understands like it's people first right it, it's a human connection and it's not that you know every a great leader will be the first to say hey i don't have all the answers i'm just a few further steps ahead on the on the ladder of life but I'm going to show you how to get up that ladder faster, quicker, right? And with greater ease, right? And, and again, that speaks volumes to, again, it's guiding, it's mentoring, it's helping people discover how truly great they are, right? How, how to get that next level of, of, of greatness. So, so I love everything you're saying, coach. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're proud of what I'm proud of like the, the impact I've made on some people, obviously. And, the relationships that we've had along the way you know and i think the other thing is that it is like steve is, coach samara has done a great job here in terms of making it about the people like just even our dynamic here about how our setup is here like we're a much smaller roster than most other people you know what i mean i think the other thing is like literally our offices like i've had like three knocks on my door because our offices are in the locker room so like i get to connect with our like we get to connect with our athletes every day and it makes our job like that opportunity and that job of guiding and mentoring that much easier when you're constantly connected. And I, I you know, I really value Steve for creating that atmosphere. He just feel like he got the opportunity to create this from scratch. And like, if you had asked me before this, like put the coach's office in the locker room, are you crazy? Yeah. And like, I love it because we're connecting with these guys. Like every day I get to kind of shoot the breeze with these guys. You know what I mean? Like, hang out with them for a minute while they're doing therapy like they get to come in and ask me questions about football I can notice if a kid is having a hard day you know what I mean and bring him in and be like hey like are you good like do you need something like what can I do to help you know and uh you know I, I love that that entered that culture that we've created here you know I think that I've been blessed to be a part of some other great cultures as well so you know, it's interesting. You, and you shared it a couple of times, the word love came up and, and, you know, I heard a great saying, right. It's this idea, like we think it has to be tough love, but I often look at it as what if we chose to love tough, right. Where again, it, and, and people have to feel like you generally care about them, that you want to see them, you know, succeed and thrive. And then once you have that, once you built that trust, then it's game on. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but again, I, I love how you're so focused on, developing that relationship first because once that trust is built then you can push people even harder because 
they know that it's, <laughs> they might not like it all the time, but at least yeah. they know that you genuinely care and want to see them succeed. Yeah. And honestly, I think that like, especially what we're seeing in our unit here at Carlton, like at the offensive line unit, like their products, a little bit of what we've created. Mm-hmm. And it's funny. Cause like, I, it literally came up today. They had a thing with Richie incognito and, in, in uh, with the Raiders and like coaches, he said like, Coaches like guys like you because you carry the head coach's message, right? Like vets like you carry the head coach's message or the unit coach's message. And I think that we have a great group of veteran offensive linemen here. And then even in our room, we have a great group of veterans here that are carrying Coach Samara's message, that are carrying my message to the unit. And like, it makes my job that much easier, you know, because let's not be naive. Like if I'm always harping on you, like there's going to be some kind of like that just goes in one ear and out the other. You know what I mean? And that's, that's the reality of coaching. Right. But but when you start hearing it from a fifth year vet, like, Hey man, dude, like you drove that guy, like your footwork's not great, but like you have some ability. It means that much more. You know what I mean? The same thing, like fifth year guys, like, Hey man, how you doing? Like, how you doing? Like you've just moved away from home. Like, You know, like our guys got together on the weekend, like, you know, we have like five guys that are away from home for the first time. So like, you know, it's the same things that I would try to do, like try to pull those guys in here and spend some time with them. Like they're trying to create that same, same environment, which is, it's, uh, it's awesome. Like it's exciting. You know what I mean? It it really is. So. Well, and and again, I, I can feel like your energy, right. Your enthusiasm of what you see is happening, right. What's growing. And I love how you talked about that idea of like consistent messaging, right? I, I, I'm a firm believer, you know, working with coaching against that the best coaches, the best leaders, the best mentors, the best teachers are ones that have a simple and consistent message that they just repeat over and over and over. And, you know, doing this work now that I've dedicated my life to, I've learned that's actually how you change the mind is through repetition. If you only say things once and, and, oh, you just expect people, 99%, 99.9% of people will never hear it. But again, can you, can you communicate those clear and simple messages day in, day out? Because again, consistency creates confidence, right? Confidence creates champions. So, so again, it's that consistency. So I love coach. I again, keep it simple, simple. Yeah. Right? And again, testament to you as a, as a great leader. Uh, the same thing though. I mean, it's, it's, I've been in a position where I've been around great leaders. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's like, I am very much like, I hate to say it, this is like one, one of the, one of my bosses said it like R and D stands for like rip off and duplicate. So like you do like, and you said this at the start, like taking some nuggets from what everybody does. And like one of the best things like through the COVID best results of what we've created here is like, we've revamped our culture. Like literally stripped it down, you know, our values, our mission statement, like you name it. And we kept it simple. Like we're here to develop champions on and off the field. And for us, champions means more than just holding a trophy. It's champions in everything that you do. Champions in the classroom, champions in your community, in your res, you know what I mean? Champions on the field. And, you know, when we talk about champions, there's three, three, three simple things that, you know, we talk about and it's trust, you know, responsibility and communication. And, you know, for us, it's really simple. Like, and we want to use that word as like a motivator or like an incentive, like, Hey, JT, like, man, you worked your butt off today in the weight room and you champion that place. Like you way to be a champion. And it's been fun to see like, when it's funny when, when you have things like that, like, and like the PJ flex stuff, like row the boat, like probably at the first couple times, like they're like, oh, yeah, man, champion, but like, or row the boat. But like at the end of it, like if you create enough energy and put enough energy in, if you continue to promote it and continue to understand and continue to make them understand what being a champion is like, mm-hmm. it means something. And like the goal is in 20 years when we come back and hopefully with a couple of rings on our fingers, that'd be great. But like, we can say we're real champions, but like, you know, I think that I can the materialistic uh, mm-hmm. form of champions, but I know that what we've created and, you know, simplifying our message 
um, has been pretty beneficial this thus far. And, you know, we'll put it to the real test on September 18th. Mm -hmm. and, and I love how you share just again, sim simple, right? Keep it simple, simple. That idea of champion. And I love how you just gave that idea. Hey, you were a champion today in the weight room, right? Like you went all in today. And just that simple idea of leaving anyone you come into contact with, with the impression of increase, like leave them better than when you got there. And just that simple idea, like when you tell people, hey, you're champion, I really love what you did in the weight room today, that what that does is it, 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 it sort of you invest into that person, you get them to think highly of themselves. And when you consistently get people to think highly of themselves, that's where I talk about that's winning the effortless way, right, is, is then you get more buy in then when there's more people that are there that are sort of wearing the flag that are doing the things you need to. That's what it's about. And that's what transformational leaders do. They get people, but their goal is to get pe other people to think highly of themselves, to be calm and confident, right? So I love it, Coach. Again, highly of the, highly, think highly of themselves in that team environment too, is that like they can make an impact because like football, it, it's one of a kind. Like, you know, like we carry, like now we're at like 88, you know, like we're one of the smaller rosters probably in the, in the country. You know what I mean? And like to think that, if you're number 87 in the roster, like our goal when you come to Carlton is that you feel invested in what we do. Our, our success is a direct product of all 88 guys on our roster. And that's where that connection, you know, like you said, like passing the culture along to somebody else and spreading that energy uh, is really important. So coach, I have um, one question for you before we end off. And, you know, this, this last year, year and a half, as we've been talking about, has just really been an interesting time in human history. It's, you know, again, it's acknowledging that everyone's experience has been different, right? But I think if we can all agree that it has prompted many of us to just maybe ask different questions, right? And I think it's reminded us that challenges, obstacles, adversity are part of the game of life. It's not that we want to expect them, but we just understand that they do pop up from time to time. So I'm curious, what is one suggestion, one piece of advice you would give someone that's maybe going through a tough time right now? You know, that, that, that suggestion, that piece of advice that can help them get back on their feet, that can help them create a positive action, that can just help them back on their journey to greatness. What, what would you offer them? Huh. Uh... I don't know if it's as simple as just like creating positive habits in terms of like um, being simple and creating some of those positive habits. So for me, like, I won't lie. Like it's, it was a roller coaster, but like, okay. Creating simple routines for yourself that create positive outcomes. So like being active, you know, like getting yourself out, connecting with people that you have strong relationships with. You know, I think that's a big thing. Uh, I think the other thing is like, if you have those strong relationships, being free and feeling open enough to talk about it is really important. And I'm blessed with a whole lot of people that like are willing to talk it out. Like my parents are like one of my best sounding boards and, you know, like it's awesome. And, you know, it, it's, it's both sides of the table. The other thing that I say is you got to be able to disconnect from some things. Right. And as much as like you don't want to say that through the COVID times, you know, like you create your positive routine, but you got to be able to disconnect from some of the things that you commit a lot of energy to. And that's one thing like I have a hard time with. But like I'm blessed with a whole bunch of friends back home that could care less about football. Like they I don't even think they know how many people are on the field. Yeah. But like for me, it's awesome because like when I'm with them, you know, I don't need. I don't need to feel like, okay, what do I got to do next? Like, you know, like with football, like I always feel like, especially in this environment, like you feel like you always got to keep going. And that was kind of like some of the uncertainty with, you know, COVID is that like, okay, I got one or two things to do. Like, what do I do with the rest of my time? So for me, it was about creating a positive routine, um, connecting and, and kind of not necessarily reestablishing, but like, having some of those good connections with people that you really care about, that you're really close to. And then the other side of the coin is disconnecting for a minute, you know, letting yourself just relax, you know, and um, 
that was probably the thing that was most valuable for me, like through the whole process. Cause I think that it was, it was up and down. It, it really was like through all this. And I think that if I didn't have football right now, you know, and you know, I didn't have that family time to disconnect this summer, you know, and that friend time, you know, I think that I'd still be working at it. You know, I'm in a position where I'm fortunate that we got a season back. Thank goodness. Yeah. You know, and that's inspiring me right now and it's keeping me driven right now. But, you know, that's my advice for the people that are going through some of those situations. Create yourself a positive routine. You know, I think that being active is really important. Um, and then making good connections with the people that you care about and you love, with, love like significant connections, like spending significant time. As much as my parents get on my nerves sometimes, I loved every minute I got to be around them this summer and my family. <laughs> And then being able to disconnect, you know, not putting anything on your shoulders for a night or two is, is good for you. You know? So I think that's a good, I don't know if that's great yeah. advice, but I think that that's what's worked for me. So all I can pass around, pass along is, is what's worked for me. And, and what I really love from what you talked about was again, just how honest you were about, Hey, the game of life is filled with ebbs and flows. It's like a football game, right? Like some plays work, some don't, back to the drawing board. So I love that, you know, it's always this idea of like, just win the next play, right? Win today. And, you know, I, I'd even share with you, like for me, I made a decision today on my run. I, I need to unplug because I love what I do and I can get immersed, right? Like anyone that knows me knows, like I can know two speeds. I'm either all in or not in at all. Love it. You're, you're my kind of guy. <laughs> I'm in the same boat, but I right? like, you know what I mean? And it's tough yeah. because like you're passionate about this. Yeah. You know, like for you to take away and step away from teaching for to do this was a mm -hmm. was a huge jump. And like, I think that that's so honorable to jump into it. And you've done a fantastic job. I don't need to pump your tires too yeah. much, but like you have yeah. and like, but you're spending a lot of energy on this. And like yeah. what you realize is like, is that you need to get away for a minute. And like, for me, I'm the same boat. Like I could sit, sit here. I could be in the office at 730 <laughs> and leave at 1130. Like it's no yeah. problem for me. You know, yeah. but I know at the end of the day, when, when things are going to get tough, you know, I have to be in the right mindset to be able to handle it. And if yeah. I'm carrying some of those, you know, being tired and being worn down and, and trying to do too much. And yeah. it, it affects, like we said, like your thoughts, it affects those positive thoughts and you have to work even harder to get it back. And there's going to be some point, there's a breaking point at some point. And that's what you got to have to be cognizant of is that you don't want to get to that point. Yeah. And, and again, it's a valuable reminder, right? Like high level athletes, it's, it's about, it's not about the efficient drive, right? We got that. It's, it's a matter of harnessing it. And, you know, like for me, it's really bookending my day. My, my work days, I'm going down for meditation because that habit I know helps me be still and then it transition. I can go from that transition from what I know my day to where it's family time. So, so again, we're very much in sync. It's, it's about harnessing that ambition and drive. So absolutely. Love it. So coach, I'm curious, how can people connect with you? Maybe people again, just want to shoot the breeze with you. Maybe you've piqued some interest about, you know, Carlton Ravens football. What's the best way people can connect with you via social email? Yeah, so I'm lucky that I have like the same social connect for everything. So yeah. uh, C at CTHPKNS, so CT, Chris, and then Thomas is my middle name, and then yeah. Hopkins without the vowels. That's yeah. from way back in school, so I'll carry that forever. <laughs> uh, that's my uh, connection on Instagram and, and Twitter, and then uh, Chris Hopkins on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I I would love to hear some feedback and obviously okay. uh, I would love to connect with more people and, you know, I'm in recruiting. So like I said, I'm usually pretty close to my phone and, yeah. um, but I do disconnect once in a while. I'll get back to you for sure. So, but that's probably the best way. Okay. And we'll be sure to share, I'll be sure to sh share coaches, uh, social media handles in the description on Facebook, on YouTube and on the description of the podcast. So coach, what I wanted to do was just take a moment. I, I want to take a moment to acknowledge you. I want to acknowledge you for the man you are, the son you are, the amazing, you know, coach and mentor you are, but, but most importantly, the amazing human being you are. 
the one thing I've always appreciated about you from the first moment you came to an A.B. Lucas practice was how much you truly value people, right? And, and again, I've met a lot of coaches in, in my coaching career, but I could really just tell as soon as I met you, the energy, the enthusiasm, how much you love people and just want to serve was so evident. And, you know, I just really want to celebrate you for understanding that and consistently demonstrating that. So thank you for reminding me about the importance of putting people first, coach. Unbelievable. Thanks so much, JT. It's good fuel for the day. It, it means a lot. It's tough to, you know, you, you don't always hear that stuff. So it means a lot. And uh, I can't tell you how much I respect what you're doing and everything you're doing and sending that gratitude the same way. Thank you, coach. So you've been listening to coach. And again, he's dropped so many nuggets of wisdom about how you can be great, not only on the football field, but how to be a great student, how to be great at health, great relationships, but most importantly, to be great at the game of life. So my suggestion to you is take one of the nuggets of wisdom and apply it to your life today. And as I remind you every time in the huddle, knowledge is potential power. It's the consistent and focused application day in, day out, play in, play out that actually creates greatness. So go do the work. And I look forward to chat with you next time in the huddle. Have a great day, everyone.